scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Cultures have changed. The interests of people have changed. Perspectives have changed. Technology has changed a lot of things technology has changed our appetites the world right now is only hours away from anywhere anywhere hours away i'm sure that in the in the next future or in, in the next uh, maybe five ten years i'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again they will program them to work with your mind i just think of nas and his phone beeps it can happen I mean, there's artificial intelligence in phones. Phones can feel, phones can record, they can have memories. So the 21st century is here. And what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned? Because the old ways of doing things, even as far as kingdom advancement, will no longer be effective. I think it was school of ministry again, I was telling them, did you know that right now you can stand near an influential man's daughter attempting to preach to her? They can just snap you and in five minutes the police are coming to catch you and they'll say you are harassing her. Are we together now? You are harassing her. So the world, the world is, is gradually strangling the opportunities, the access points we have to reach people. And we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the Spirit of God. To adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate. Is God blessing us? One of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the Holy Spirit. You will become something else. Completely something else. There are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century. Please listen to me. There are businessmen. There are, there are entrepreneurs. There are all kinds of people. Families. The, the paradigm of fatherhood, parenting leadership is being compelled to change to adjust to 21st century living but you see a believer is not just one who is born again a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom and that your change must be with the holy spirit supervision so that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change and which ones are flexible enough not everything in the christian life is permitted to change there are timeless things. There are components of the believer's life that must remain constant. And I'll tell you where we get this teaching from. 1 Corinthians 9.22, please. I need to balance this teaching. Is God blessing us already? 1 Corinthians 9.22. This is the Bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in. And we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy. Now, I believe in metamorphosis. I'm teaching you change now. But that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. 
everyone read this is paul writing to the corinthian church one to read to the weak became as i as weak that i may gain the weak are we together read on i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some now paul is saying something interesting here let me translate this for you paul is saying i can become anything to anybody this is a nice verse for satan to take advantage of meaning become a smoker to smokers are we together become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them that's not what the bible is saying but that's what has happened in many churches in our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century we have been misguided by this scripture and many things that happen there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic meaning the holy spirit is involved hallelujah the idea listen the idea of paul here is that i am able to make adjustment the idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions it's an idea of making adjustments the summary of this entire communication is that paul is saying because of the reality of my society i am able to make adjustments listen any church any pastor that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews i repeat any pastor any businessman any ceo any worker that cannot adjust notice i didn't say leave your convictions adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people when you become rigid and stringent forget about advancing the kingdom into this world one of our fathers who has done that most remarkably that is a model for all of us is papa ee adeboe i've studied the redeemed christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence i will tell you the key is this flexibility not compromise there is a difference between compromise and flexibility papa Iya deboe is a man of strong convictions he's very conservative in his approach to christianity alongside his wife but he realized that if i must achieve the mandate of seeing every redeemed church or at least in every two or three houses let there be one redeemed member i must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising the key is to maintain your convictions but give allowance for the conviction of others let them be able to find a place in your vision and so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches and so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative still adhering to the foundational tenants and you can see one that is quite modern in fact very modern you may not know that this is redeemed his job as a man of god is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeem this is a winning strategy so you can find redeem in france you can find redeemed in um in in certain places that you would not expect many pastors are unwilling to bend we are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility so the key is that we must be able to make adjustment everybody say adjustment adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement you cannot say i cover my hair i don't i don't believe 
in wearing trousers for instance or leaving hair and you say any other person i come across who i see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil i tear the person down you are going to be frustrated at the same time nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily you have a right to sustain your convictions but at the same time you must be able to give room are we together now i'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century i've gone to minister in several places and um when you go to minister in places you'll be amazed the approach of many people i've gone to ministries that are very conservative very very conservative i've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox i've gone to ministries that are wild i've gone to ministries that are lawless that one is not charismatism is lawlessness yet in the midst of it i have been able to make adjustment without violating my convictions are we together koinonia runs on certain convictions but part of the reason why god has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments are we together now adjustments that can allow people to to come in and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies but give them space to know god for themselves and in that knowing god many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them is god blessing us yeah you cannot win people you resent you cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil you want to kill me and your idea was to come and win her and then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner you see i will not listen to your message no no no, no. it has nothing to do with being angry i will not listen to your message you come to preach to me for 10 minutes you don't even know what my name is you are initiating me into a cult you are misrepresenting the love of christ at the same time i will not come and see you and you say ah uh, you really want to preach christ to me if prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this i'm i'm in the club if you really want to win me come and meet me at the club i won't come go to hell are we together there is a balance so that we don't begin to do stupid things there are ladies that have entered relationship you ask them why they say i'm on a code ah, you are not sss that's 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 too costly you say i entered relationship it's not love or oh, i don't love him ask him i i am passionate about souls you are getting it wrong i'm trying to explain this scripture i become all things to all men does not mean i leave my convictions to turn into everything whether you are wearing jeans or suit you are a christian and being a christian is is exact there's no confusion about it christianity is not buddhism there are exact tenets there are exact foundational convictions write this down We must carefully study the word. Please, let's write. Let's hurry up. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is found in the bible timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the bible we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless 
keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now keys to kingdom influence Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on us. Sing it one more time. Ask and now give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Keys to kingdom influence. Listen, I've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence the new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism the advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform and is able to influence the convictions of people never trivialize influence and its effect to a person a territory a people and a civilization at every point in your life you are being influenced by somebody and you are influencing somebody keys are very important in the kingdom you hear Jesus speak again about keys and I will give you the keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries, the laws, and the principles that give us access. The keys of the kingdom are the mysteries, the laws, the principles that give us access. There are keys to kingdom influence. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm praying that I say, I begin to teach this as you embrace it. You will step into a level of influence that will surprise you. The Lord spoke to us and said, this is our year of multiplied grace and influence. He expects us to do more. And he's guiding us on how to get there. Number one, the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace setting, trailblazing, global mentality. Write it the way I said it. Don't write your idea. Pay setting, comma. I took time to write it this way. It's supposed to create an effect. Don't scatter it. Pay setting, comma. Trailblazing, comma. Global mentality. Write it and look at me. Let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. Hold on. Pace setting, trailblazing, global mentality. See, we, many of us are still growing and we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is. As marketed to us by our institutions, as marketed to us by our upbringing as marketed to us by our christian advocates our pastors we are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years our approach the approach of the average christian is not global the approach of the average christian is not pace setting we are comfortable with mediocrity Yet we want to command influence. A music artist. No global mentality. 
no pay setting mentality so we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for God but our mindsets are small I have challenged the leaders again and again koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is is way beyond nigeria and africa you see we must be able to excel let's look at a few scriptures matthew 5 14 then Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One, two, read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? Global approach to life. We start up businesses with no idea of global approach. The average business in Nigeria, if it lasts 10 years, is a miracle. 15 years is a wonder. We don't think far. Right? The average church, do you know how many churches start in January? And by December, they are dead. Because the way the pastor started and was running, you would think rapture will happen tomorrow. And he runs no, no sense of leadership, no pace setter, trailblazer mentality. We come into a system and do the exact same thing. Listen, listen. There is a difference between a manager and a leader. A manager maintains status quo. A leader breaks new frontiers. A true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit. You cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old. Daniel 6, verse 2 to 3. Pace setting mentality. Hallelujah. This was the story of Daniel. Look up, please. Let's see the kind of mindset Daniel had. It's not just that he was called Daniel. He reigned over certain provinces. The Bible says, and over these three presidents, sorry, I'm cutting from verse 1, of whom Daniel was what? Please read it. Of whom Daniel was? First means a pace setter. First means a leader. Surpassing ordinary standards. He said that the princes might give accounts to them and the kings should have no damage verse 3 then this daniel was what everybody say pace setters this daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes why because an excellent spirit was it because he was a christian because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible and the king thought to set him over what influence as a result of a pace setting mentality how many christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons they don't care in fact they run away when they tell them they are considering you for promotion they say ah have a for what now have a god is it that you don't know what it's a demonic mentality whoever taught you that is it, it may be a sincere person but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church bad i love jesus when jesus showed up he broke status quo genesis 41 give us 33 then we move to 38 to 44 please very fast sorry we have to read these things because i want to press something in tonight Genesis 41, give us verse 33, then we'll move to 38 down to 44. Now look up please everyone. 
this was the story of joseph now therefore this is joseph advising pharaoh now therefore look out for a man discreet and wise whoever qualifies whoever has that mentality give him this kind of influence set him over the land of egypt there is influence for the taking but there is a requirement who is that one man in egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result give us verse 38 hear what the king says in response and pharaoh said unto his servant can we find ah, yeah, 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 yeah. may that be your testimony that even your enemies will sit together and say let's tell ourselves the truth can we find a trailblazer that when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church they turn and say which which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government can we find such a one as this is a man of whom the spirit of god is we're reading down to 44 and pharaoh said unto joseph listen for as much as god has showed thee this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art watch how cheap influence becomes thou shalt do what i give you influence instantly thou shalt be over my house I hope you know Pharaoh knew that Joseph was not an Egyptian. There are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background. All this issue of we don't accept people from this state, they've not found an exceptional person, that's why. That's when you see them breaking the rule. They will say this is the first time we're doing it. Say that's that, I'm, a, I'm a first timer. I have, I have the spirit of breaking new grounds. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to my word shall all thy word shall all the people be ruled. Can you imagine? That's a costly, that's a risk from Pharaoh. He says, Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over how many? All the land of Egypt. Do you think that's good for the kingdom? Do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence? Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where's my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. Because of mentalities that we think are good. The church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement. We are there smiling, throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is, is gaining, is squeezing the church into a mold. And one policy can just write us away. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of royalty, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land. Shout influence. Say it again. In our families, there's nobody to speak for us. When we are suffering, we just call on God directly. And God wants to answer, but there is no envoy, no human being that can partner with God to wipe our tears do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family you hear people here say i'm the first person to go to school 
I'm the first person to get a job. You know the danger? Every other person surrounds you like worms. Drawing from you. You are earning 100,000 and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you. leadership is the passion to excel when i talk of leadership i don't just mean ruling leadership in terms of excelling the passion to excel at an uncommon level i'm explaining to you what pace setting trailblazing global mentality is in one word is leadership the passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere listen the reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access. We need men and women who have access. And I tell you, Koinonia, hear me. This is what you are becoming. Are we together now? Oh, this is what you are becoming. Just give us time. In the next few years, in the next few years, you know the way if somebody is walking and he says, my name is Nas Dangote. Even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. I will never pastor and lead people who are failures We just comfort ourselves. And No, no, no. A passion to excel you are in agriculture you are thinking how do I lead not Kai how do I get my small one mudu of beans me and my wife she's not even complaining you are not pace setting you are not trailblazing remember that if all you want to do is succeed you are carnal but if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow God come into that space you are an ambassador always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit and then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you i will never be small i hate it and it is for the kingdom number two the second key to kingdom influence is character you want to command kingdom influence in our generation today you need character everybody say character what is character christ likeness moral uprightness second peter chapter one from verse five to nine talks to us about sustaining kingdom character just write it down we may not have time to look at it listen brothers and sisters please look at me if you want to be global those outside please pay attention if you want to go far in business in ministry in your career you have to curb a lot of excesses in your life the bible says listen to me the bible says um all things are lawful but not all things are expedient. All things are permissible, but not all things are necessary. On your journey to influence, there are weights. Some things are not necessarily sinful. They are just weights. Weights. Character, moral uprightness. From the way you speak, the way you dress the way you behave you want to be a leader you are in a place they are sharing food ah, i have not got you you are just stretching you are not a leader god cannot promote you to disgrace him like that there is a decorum there is a protocol for great people i'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life but you must be disciplined you are dressing you iron your clothes you talk well. You see people, you greet them. You don't see somebody like our daddy here and say, Ah, daddy, how are you, prof? You know, as if you are talking to 
to yourself. No. Character. There are many people who do not have character. Moral uprightness. You see an elderly woman moving your mother, something you cannot help her pick up the load. No character. There's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away. We, we associate youthfulness to wildness. That means if you are temperate, people think you are too cold. Be wild. You won't be a leader that way. Look at how teachers, the teachers in our school, who teach our students. You see how they dress? You see how they talk? Now, I'm not against anything, but a young man comes, rings in his five hands. I'm not against all of those things, but you are not, it's not seen, but it's a weight. The students are watching you. The next day, they come with it too. You sag your jeans. A teacher, you see jeans with, um, um, uh, what they call it, all kinds of there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere i mean there's nothing for the imagination believe me if nobody has told you anything is wrong with it joshua selman is saying it write it mark me something is wrong with that kind of thing you won't go far with it i'll preach oh <laughs> hallelujah see there is a protocol to greatness you must give up something to go up you cannot go up with everything you wear with down it's, it, you are down because a weight held you if you are ready to move up be ready to drop some things vulgar communications don't speak intelligently many of us today cannot construct a good letter a proposal because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us you are writing something to apply for a job you are writing you as you for as letter four you see that i need a job from you thanks and the manager looks at it and says look at look at all these nuisance to our company we have labored to build ourselves and these people are coming to destroy us see our generation interprets modesty as weakness when your life is temperate, you feel guilty for it. Because we live in a generation where you must be loud and wild to be thought of. Those people will not last long. History is full of many of them. Prison cells are full of many of them. They created their own rules to life. Everybody say, I'll be a man of character say it i'll be a man of character or a woman of character yes every bad wife was a bad human being <laughs> every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being every bad leader was a bad human being you bring in your personality you bring in your mindset it doesn't just change when you become ceo it's an attitude hallelujah moral uprightness you are calm not the person moving around gossiping about everybody saying everything about everybody no only cheap people do that only idle people do that hallelujah there are rules for greatness you ignore them you will never be great the level that God has brought us in ministry by the grace of God. You see all these people inside and outside. I honor God and I bless them. But never make a mistake. They didn't just come just because of the anointing. There are factors combined together. This is what I'm teaching you. See, let me tell you. People never become loyal to you until they probe your life. And they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to loyalty is not a gift you earn it are we together there are so many people who see especially some of us young people and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity no loyalty is a product of a track record people probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions 
and they, they, are, they, are, they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to. You don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual. Character. There are many pastors who don't have character. You just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning. Peace be unto this house and pastor so 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 bang 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 bang. Madam is there tea. You think it's a nice thing. They are marking you. You represent boredom to them. No character. Are you anointed? Yes. Will you last like that? No. That's how we inconvenience a lot of people. You now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say, transfer 7,000 or 10,000 to my account. God keeps quiet and you think he was right. He was very wrong. It's just his mercy that overlooked it. There are pastors who do that. The moment they say, I want to pray for you, what they say is, I want money from you. Moment they pray for you, they just say, transfer 2,000 to my account so that it can activate the faith. There is a place for seed faith. But many of the things we do. That's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people, even some of us young ministers, you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting. They are looking at you. You have to talk for five minutes for them to eat, to loosen up. And say, oh, this guy, this guy looks very cultured. Character. You get to somebody's house in five minutes, you have entered their kitchen. They are prime plantain, you carry one, you eat, you go out. They are watching you. There are some of us like this, I must talk to you. I want you to become something. And we must curb these things. Don't do that. Say, no, 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 we are free. They always allow me. No, see, let me tell you. Part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good. You must see. There are certain things that is like Esau. You are trading your birthright for it. There are times people have carried fat seeds and, and checks, something to give me. And the Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 no. Because in their minds, they are feeling guilty. They are not just blessing me out of conviction. They just feel tall. This man of God has prayed. And you see them, I'm ready to go. And you see them pinching themselves, giving signs. And somebody will enter and they come out. And then I tell them, I say, no, 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 no. I receive it, I bless it, and I sow it back. And it's, ah, man of God, can we have your number, please? Honestly, you see that? You have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you, your convictions are greater than money. For some of us, Abba, you collect and count it and say, Abba, madam, you too. Abba, what is all this? How much is my transport from where I left? I did night vigil, deliver us the money. You are dropping 10,000, you drop it on the table. Then I say, madam, add something. Are you fake? No, but you are a suspect. It's easy for people to think you went to collect power. Some of us, the way we dress. Uh, now, please, um, don't, 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 don't feel bad. I'm, I'm just trying to work on you. I've seen men of God. Um, please, I'm not, uh, I wish I don't have to preach this, but I have to obey God. From your hairstyle, the way you look, you look like a thief. You look like, I mean, the way you are dressing. And even when you are talking, people are afraid. They are not at ease. Honestly, you may not be, you may be the nicest person available. But something about your lack of character and environment. You tell a lady, I want to see you, she's shaking. Because she doesn't even know what can happen. No, come on. I want you to be on a project that you must be trusted. Be on a project. Be trustworthy. Not perfection. But you are sincere enough to be trustworthy. When people commit their loyalty to you, it's a trust. You don't disappoint it. How many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people? Loyalty is a trust, brothers and sisters. So God is talking to some of us now who are careless with little, little things. You just sit down and send the text to four or five sisters. You make jollof rice for me. You, my birthday is coming by June. I want a suit. Sam, you buy uh, this and that. There are men of God that do that. I'm sorry if, if you are in that category, forgive me, but it's wrong. I cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department, all of you bring 100,000. My birthday is coming in June. Choir, 
you bring bring buy me shoe uh, all the pastors <laughs> pastor Femi and Alpha and you who have congregation so you people you ah, ah. God didn't send you to be a burden to the people sometimes we do these things sincerely but I'm telling you now there is need for adjustment don't do that see bless the people and let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are they will surprise you they will surprise you there is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you amen let's go to the next point some of you don't seem to like this point the third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence excellence what is excellence the quality of doing things well the quality of doing things well write this down the difference most times is not what you do but how you do it the difference brothers and sisters that makes you a great man of influence most times is not what you do is how you do it while i was babbing this this evening i was talking to my baba and i was just telling him that do you know that there are babbing saloons in abuja that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him but you will pay because of how they do it the clipper for babbing is different for carving is different there is really nothing there just packaging but because of that packaging you will pay for it he was telling me that the, i think it was oga jordan he should be here he went to abuja also and then he went to bab somewhere with his brother and they paid three thousand they gave them wine and chinchin is that what you cannot buy how much is chinchin ten naira how much is this coke this 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 uh, heaven pure heaven wine 250 add it together you paid three thousand and then you watch match but listen it's excellent so you'll be rewarded when you are excellent you name your price you see that what you are doing now are you excellent in it please let me talk to us i salute i know many people in koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things but i want to challenge you are you excellent oh you make kunu you think he's small but are you excellent why don't you think of a way of doing it very well don't say kunu is not nice if you make it well i will buy it I think someone in the protocol he has um, some popcorn machines on campus and then i told him i said i want to taste your popcorn let me see what and what do you put there and he was telling me what he said all that one is stories bring it let me taste let me know whether you are excellent see let me tell you something the minimum standard in our world today is excellence even if you don't have the finance to grow into it have the mindset first so you have only one cloth and that one cloth will make it look as if you are not excellent you are because already you you've had an ideology of excellence you iron it you look smart it's not doing ministry that makes you excel is how you do it it's not preaching that makes you excel is how you preach it's not doing business that makes customers come to you is how you do it it's not doing your job that makes you excel but how you do it exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people they are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized excellence say i'll be excellent say it again i'll be excellent number four Give me a few minutes here and we'll pray. Open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear. <clears throat> the fourth key in our day in the 21st century 
to strategic kingdom advancement is called results we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days on common results is one of the greatest key greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence john 15 verse 8 listen i will share with you certain things about results today that will make you go back to your life and you will insist that i must produce results john 15 verse 8 15 not 5 15 verse 8 okay hearing is my father glorified read on that ye bear fruit much fruit exceptional fruit notable results it says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today thrives on results pace setters influencers are those who command results remember my teaching commanding results i want you to pay attention right now write this down on common supernatural results is the end of all argument on common supernatural result is the end of all argument creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god waiting for their manifestation i tell you i feel the anointing of the spirit as i'm talking about this something will happen something must happen to you tonight uncommon result is the end of all argument write this down results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances oh hallelujah i'm a believer in the word of god results listen look at me when you produce results in your life it shows certain things that you have authority you have got the keys that commands authority i told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances there are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night that's 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 a situation that's a circumstance you hear them say circumstances beyond our control and whoever can bring it under control must command influence Mark Zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control on common supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of god and with all humility to an extent god has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life i was in kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um, with my people we were just trying to eat have a meal before we rush and come back to zaria and while we we're there just trying to order a meal a woman looks at me and um ah the woman was looking at me and now i, I started feeling embarrassed i said madam do i know you? she said you are pastor joshua i said yes she said, ah well done sir and i looked i said ah, madam how are we you know i was playing with her little boy and i said where do i know you and the woman just nodded 
she said she was going to tell me a little story and she said I came for counseling two years ago looking as wretched as anything a single mom with a child no hope for marriage finances crashing everything being destroyed and you prayed for me and you prophesied you told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they would send me to the marketing department and i should go there say man of god that's exactly what happened they sent me to the marketing department and i was i was sad and she did her hand like this i saw a ring she said two months ago i got married even with the child she pointed outside and i saw a clean black e-class she said will you believe that i will be the owner of this brothers and sisters say results one result will end every kind of argument every kind is god speaking to us results pastors produce results produce results you know why our prayer department by the grace of god is like it's like second koinonia it's like midweek service of koinonia for many people because of results they are praying and they are seeing results nobody will come and spend two three hours here just like that people are not idiots results by the time your life listen i don't care how much you pray or fast if there is no result you'll be frustrated the end of your work with god is that God ah, you come to a point where you become so full of the anointing of the spirit you can produce a common result fill me up until I overflow I want to run over I want to run over fill me up until I overflow, I want to run over. I want to run over. Sing one time. Fill me up. Till I overflow, I want to run over. I want to run over. Please fill me up. Till I overflow. I want to run over. You must have a passion. I'd like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results. You are a pastor, no results, no healings, no miracles, no salvation, no transformation. And you explain away and say, it's because I'm telling the truth. People are not coming. All those things are flimsy excuses. Results. When a family that is barren comes and there is a miracle, that's results. There are some results you cannot argue with. No. No. You're a businessman. Don't worry that people don't believe in you. My brother, produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody. Even if all you are doing is packing soccer away, just produce results. Let me tell you something. It's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show. Because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness. Not your words. I can do this. I am this and that. No! I can pray. Where is the fruit of the prayer? I can fast. Where is the fruit of the fasting? I am warded. Where is it? Results. You want to command influence in our world today. You need results. You need results. This is the apex of this teaching tonight. You need results. Supernatural results. Write the following things about results. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Let me show you a scripture that would probably really, really surprise you. 
Give us Matthew 14, please. Let's look at it. Matthew 14. Shabaratu zede balakariyada. Ombri da subre hashina malia karatu skubreya. Matthew 14. We read from verse 23, and um, we read down to the end. Let's hurry up. And when he had sent the multitudes away, everybody watch this. He went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Rush, media, just continue. But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. There was a situation those in the sheep could not control. Next verse. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, doing what? Brothers and sisters, the same water, the same water, was responding differently to Jesus the same water you know why because Jesus was operating on certain principles are we together now next verse and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit notable results and they cried out for fear there is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you they will be afraid that one will move beyond the realm. I watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of God begins to break out. I see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust, trying to show like I'm, I'm okay, I'm not afraid. There are certain results that can happen in your life. It will make the heart of men fear. But straightway Jesus spake to them saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. He said, Be not afraid, verse 28. And Peter said unto him, Lord, if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water 29 mm. and he said come and when peter was come down out of the water he walked on the water to go to jesus 30 this is my verse of emphasis but when he saw the wind boys terrors he was afraid and began to sing and he cried saying lord save me look at this two people are standing on water one is sinking the other one is standing was it the water never the water same nigeria same economy same dollar rise same everything are we together now same harshness in ministry same being in the north where they say people are persecuted but then you sustain a mystery jesus was standing and when peter cried he lifted peter and peter stood just like him meaning you can bring people to your experience listen there was something Jesus knew that made that water treat him that way. There is something you do not know that is making your life turn around. Someone is walking through it like this. Life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept. Please hear me. Correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Number two, Results are a product of mastery, 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 exceptional competence. You have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously. That's the kind of attitude that produces results. Number three, results are a product of diligence. There are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens sometimes you may knock for many years but you continue diligence and persistence is what separates men from boys diligence number four and i want you to leave this take home this one tonight results are a product of the presence of the anointing ah the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. When results become supernatural and consistent, then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it. When results become notable and consistent, 
listen listen if you produce results for a short time it will not create the effect it needs to be consistent that's why you find out that god can be using a particular man of god or a church he can continue for many years and then one is like he hits a breaking point in the spirit in one year he will step into a dimension of increase consistency consistency I was watching a video of Steve's Joe, late Steve's Joe, Apple founder, 1991. 1991, he was talking to their team of executives. And if you hear that guy's idea, as at 91, everything he was saying they would do, they did. Men who produce results. Brothers and sisters, if you're part of this ministry, you must produce results not just receive results produce results in every area hallelujah when our sister came up and said she got five points i laughed but i was impressed with her but i'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row that's notable enough that's the type we can clap with and smile set your standards so high even when they are clapping for you you are still pressing to move higher if you set your standard too low you will hit it easily that's what mediocrity is setting low standards i like her she said four point something when she hit it she set another one you must set a very high standard there is such a high standard that i put in ministry that's why i don't compete because the standard alone, I keep competing against that standard, is enough to engage me. Hallelujah. I want to get to a point where I will be so full of the Holy Ghost. So full of the anointing of His Spirit, I'm telling you. You don't have to start praying for people. It doesn't matter what you are talking about. They will pay to get your presence in a place. Even if it's just to sit down, they know they will never be the same. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Please fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. Listen, let me challenge you, everybody here. Create a system that measures your growth. Don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself A and organize speech and price for yourself. You are a mediocre when you do that. Challenge your standard. Don't do small things and rejoice over it. Let me tell you something. The key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that. As a pastor, I'm better than this guy. As a great, I'm better than this guy. Those kind of people will never be my friends. Those who come around and start telling you who they are better than, no. Because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises. I, I'm not a product of all those kinds of things. There is enough, the assignment, the demand of the assignment is enough. You compete against the standard God has given you. There is a benchmark. Those who are men of God today were ushers in the Bible. Welfare personnel. Look at the condition to be in welfare. Full of the Holy Ghost. Welfare. To serve food. You needed to serve food with the anointing. So we are constantly moving. Thank God for what God is doing through the school of ministry. But we are rising. Thank God for what God is doing through our messages and the media ministry. But we are rising. The result is too small. The result is not yet notable enough. I tell you, compared to where we are going, this is child's play. We've not started anything. The level of excellence is still at its foundation. Foundation. We have not even done anything. That's how you challenge yourself. Don't sit down with your small business and come back with 5,000 and you are laughing and say, Kai, it's better than nothing. Be happy for where you are, but never want to remain there. Oh, what do you do? I'm into interior decor. Are you... See, let me tell you something. 
anything you are not competent in just keep quiet about it talking about it will be disgracing yourself there are so many people around ask them what do you do they say i'm into interior decor really like who like what how much can i pay you is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if i don't like you you have a restaurant can we eat in your restaurant if we have a guest coming can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable i have a church can i come to your church and sit down and be sure that god will bless me oh i'm a driver like who where do you know challenge yourself don't mark yourself and say i'm good there are many talented people inside and outside somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me i said my brother please go and work on it god is helping you don't produce anything from this go and work on it it's obvious you i can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this i told them who is your role model who is your inspiration they say he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk i said how many of their videos do you have not their videos of the album they produce have you watched their stage rehearsals have you gone out of your way to find out how they rehearse? Listen, you don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance. You watch from a man by learning how he builds. You don't learn from Usain Bolt by seeing how he runs. No, you see how he rehearses. You don't learn from a man of God by just seeing how he displays the anointing. You learn the mystery of his secret place. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. God is taking us far. There are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence. Opportunities came and passed us by. is still passing us by because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence. There are so many people in this place. You are in business. You are the only one who knows you are in business because your products, you don't know nothing about business. You will not sit down and learn. You will not grow. Everybody will be, what are you doing? I'm into real estate. What are you doing? I'm a CEO. CEO of nothing. There's no result. Sit down and learn. Many young people moving around with suit and Bible and, and iPad. What are you? I'm a pastor. My name is Pastor, Pastor David Revelation or David king or something that's not what will give you open the doors of ministry let me tell you something god knows as a person i am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious and ready to rise up believe me Anything you are doing, if it's not of standard, you see, and you don't get standard by default, you learn. Learn from the best. Don't learn from your colleagues. Your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way. You rise up. You learn. Something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited. Something you know but have refused to believe is making you stay. God has given me access or common access to people and sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream I'm saying Joshua Selman what are you looking for in this place influence influence whenever you see a man of influence don't be angry it's not mistake results brothers and sisters I'm the firstborn in my family, but the way they are even treating me, I can't even talk. Result, result, result. Everybody say result. Produce result and you will switch the button. I'm 20 years, I'm 30 years, they are still treating me like a child. Result. Prove them wrong. Produce results. Don't make noise. I'm obsessed about studying successful people. I'm not ashamed. I, I have an appetite to confront my ignorance. I confront it with joy and gladness. I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that knowledge. 
I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry is as a result of the results. The level of organization at the little level we are in, there is a formula to it. It's not just happening by mistake. That you come and as many as we are, there is still some level of organization. You don't guess, you learn. What you see today is what we knew yesterday. Tomorrow will reveal what we have known today. Please, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. If you want to command influence, influence has monetary value. People will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes. And you will say, Lord, what, what is this? What are you doing to me? For if the cloud be full of rain, the Bible says they empty themselves upon the earth. Men of God, God is challenging us tonight. Stop being a mediocre. Surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them, I'm the one who prays most. That's nonsense. Mediocrity. I'm the one who has revelation more. Mediocrity. Somebody writes jam and gets 120 and his friend gets 80 and he turns and says, Kai, but I gap you by how many points? Let's count. No, I'm not, I'm not mocking. It's, it's not a mockery. I'm using it as an example. Don't feel bad if you didn't make it for jam. In fact, I, I hear they are going to write it. We'll pray for them at the end of the service. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. I know that this teaching is touching some of you. There are people who are seated right now. You can pretend like what I'm saying is not serious. There are many people standing outside right to the back. Some of them are just standing and thinking about their lives. I want to excel in my life. And I want my excellence to be intentional. Set a high standard, Koinonia. Set a high standard. Challenge yourself. When God gives you that influence, men will thank you for being influential. Your children will thank you. I was sharing with the School of Ministry students. Some of the things I do today is no longer for myself. If it's for myself, I will stop doing some things. Because I've already created a system that will bless myself. I've started thinking transgenerational. Both spiritual and physical. Not just physical children that anybody connected to me will be implicated for success just by being associated and lot went with abraham the secret place of abraham implicated lot until he was blessed who gets blessed following you or are you the type parents who warn their children about and say don't follow this this bad boy he's going to spoil your life please koinonia hear the voice of the spirit tonight it's time to settle down myself settle down and produce result stop guessing over your destiny prosperity is a reaction it's not dash advancement in ministry is a reaction we have never never said we'll raise a second offering in this ministry say oh we cannot pay for boss or we cannot do this no it has never happened and it will never happen in the name of jesus but it's, it's a formula it's a formula we don't have to manipulate you and squeeze your hand. It's a formula. Find out what the formula is. Don't just enjoy and say, Kai, this is a rich ministry. Find out what is the formula. What is the secret of the anointing of the Spirit upon our lives and the ministry? Find out. Do you care to find out? Are you humble enough to find out? I always look at the people that are close to me and I always watch out for their interest in finding out process or results when i look at people who are close to me i like to know what their passions are if you are close to a man of god there are pastors here be careful because proximity can destroy your ability to learn you are always seeing the result some of you come for koinonia and you can sit down here and in the next five minutes people are flying all over and just say kai apostle is anointed do you know it is for the taking peter said help me and jesus said i can show you let me teach you what i'm doing that is making me standing he lifted him there is something you can learn 
there is the secret of the war there is a mystery you can learn you can stand upon it it's not abracadabra it's not the more you see the less you understand the prophetic has a formula the apostolic ministry has a formula don't guess in pride learn those who learn are the ones who rise please rise upon your feet we're going to pray and i want everyone to please pray make sure you always don't miss the time of prayer here every time we share truths like this we must take our time to pray lift your hands and give god praise for this word you have heard it will change your life i will rise in your name adonai you reign on high i will rise in your name adonai you reign on high one more time lord i will rise your voice and shout it like your destiny depends on it say in the name of Jesus today I decree that I must produce results lift your voice and begin to pray results oh God Mandela Karia Dabasha, a cross Kabaria Daba, Era Dabaria Daba, Segre Bararara, yeah. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. Results, results. I pay attention to produce results i pay attention results at the end of every argument results the product of mastery results the product of diligence results the product of consistency hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of jesus from today i pay attention to laws principles and mysteries i pay attention to the laws i need to know to excel Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace, oh God. I'm tired of poverty and suffering. I need to hold on to the loss. I'm tired of defeat and failure. I'm tired of everybody hating me. Everybody fighting me. There is something I need to know. Lord, show me the loss I'm violating. Show me the laws I'm violating. Show me the laws I'm violating. Kaparatos kebaradaba. Enketele kotoshana bababa. Show me the laws I'm violating. hallelujah hallelujah i'd like you to mention every area of your life where you have not seen notable result and say every pride every attitude stopping me from being humble to learn and produce results in that area i take authority over you right now open your mouth and pray mention the area naaman was a captain of the Syrian army but 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 
there was an area in his life please pray are you praying say lord i humble myself i humble myself i humble myself i humble myself to learn i humble myself to master the art of war hallelujah one more prayer point before we have that prayer point i want to make an altar call please i want you to be serious tonight we are not joking tonight is a very serious night there are people here inside and outside from the beginning of my talk here the word of god had come to you like like a hammer you know that you have mismanaged your life and you are seeking an opportunity to say look man of god i've been looking for somebody to lead me to christ tonight right now i'm going to make that altar call two kinds of people please there are many people outside i know the lord is showing me there are people inside here you are saying man of god i have managed my life by myself and the truth is i have mismanaged it but god is giving me a new beginning and i want to take advantage of it you've never committed your heart to the lord or you have done what you think you know to be christianity but with respect to what god is doing now you know that you are not making any progress please these two categories of people i count one to five or not one to five as we are praying make your way to the front right now make your way to the front while they come out the remaining of us please lift your voice and pray and say father use me use me use me do business with me oh god lift your voice and pray please make sure you don't sit back as the holy ghost is speaking to you this is your moment of change this is your moment of change don't let any friend or the family you came with make you sit back outside no matter how far make your way make your way to the front use me oh god he said, thou art my battle axe, my weapon of war. Thou art my battle axe, my weapon of war. Thou art my battle axe. Keep coming. God bless you. hallelujah listen those of you standing here i am very happy for you for this decision don't let anybody make you think you are wasting your time there are some of us you have destroyed your life with liquor smoking drinking all kinds of things giving yourself to any and everybody there is a new beginning god wants to rehabilitate your life you heard the story of this gentleman there are still people like that you know i don't care whether you think you're a christian or not alcohol smoking drinking all kinds of things is destroying you please leave your seat and come and join them as i lead you to jesus christ leave your seat and come and join them even if everybody knows you in your area it's time to make a change it's time for a new beginning hallelujah all of you here some of you are giving your heart to christ for the first time some of you are making up your mind to be serious with God. You are welcome. Please lift your hands. And I want you to pray with me. Just one hand, your right hand. I want you to mean business. Please, if you know you are not going to be serious, go back to your seat. If you are here, be serious. You are not reciting a poem. Be very serious from the depth of your heart. No pinching, no laughing around. You are serious. We are with God here. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me this night I surrender my life I surrender my destiny to you 
I'm tired of wasting my life. Take over my life. From this night, I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that I will never be the same. The power of sin is broken over my life. In the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Father, I break the power of sin over everyone lifting their hands here. Every habit and every demon and every power that is tying anyone's destiny down. I lose you tonight in the name of Jesus. Every addiction, everything that is not of God, it dies and leaves you forever this night. I'm praying for you. From tonight, you are stepping into a new dimension. It will be from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. I'd like you to follow a brother waving his hands. Please, we need your details because we need to follow you up. It's not enough for you to just give your life to Christ. We need to follow you up. So please, you have the details and um, they will guide you and give you more information. Celebrate them as they go. All of you this way. Follow the gentleman. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Celebrate. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.